lot of sudden things we have in the body of Christ. We're not exempt from tragedy, no sorrow, no loss. It happens. Um, these are those things we really don't even have a biblical answer for. We really don't. Only that He is God. He knows all. He sees all. He's in all. But we're there to help comfort. Like even Friday, sending Kate, Kate Jones home on a good Friday. What a blessed time we had sending her home. Um, I asked God to help me not cry during the thing, and I cried through the whole thing. So... <laughs> So much of me saying I'm not going to cry in a day. So, but like I said, it's so important today that you get ready for life. See, we have an eternal promise through the blood of Christ. Uh, Terry Jones. It's so important today, resurrection from the dead, that when we remember the empty tomb, that should give you such an eternal peace. That should put such peace in your heart that, let me tell you something, when I was studying this the other day, I'll share it now, forget later. He showed me the empty tomb. Your sins, past, present, and future, were in there. Yes, amen. So never look back. Never look back on, on your past because your sins, past, present, and future, went in that tomb, and that's where they were buried. That's why he says, remember my sins no more. How should you do He's in the tomb, and just before that, in the previous chapter, the Pharisees and the priests went to Pilate and said, Hey, you need to put a stone on this and seal that tomb up and put a guard on it because they're going to come take his body away. He said he's going to rise on the third day. Well, like I said, I posted something about that. <laughs> that, was the, that was the worst lockdown there ever was in the history of humanity trying to lock Jesus down. Amen? Amen. Uh, but know that they so desired to have nobody know. I think they knew he was going to rise. I think they were so terrified of him proving what he really was and who he was. So they said, no, put a guard on that. They rolled this massive stone in front of the tomb. But nothing can hold Jesus from finishing his mission. Nothing should fin hold you back from finishing your mission. In Matthew 28, 1-7, it says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, came to the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake, hallelujah. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His <laughs> oh, do we have an army of angels around us, amen. amen. <laughs> and his countenance, <laughs> and he came and rolled back the stone from the door, sat on it, and his countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook with fear of him and became like dead men. Mm. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come and see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead, 
and indeed he is going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. See, so it's so important today that you see that empty tomb as your past. Amen. When he gave me the vision of it, he showed me everybody's sins were put on his body. When he bowed his head and said, it is finished, that was the finished work in the flesh. The spirit just began its work. Because from that point on, he was spirit again. Completely non-flesh. His flesh died, his spirit cannot die, because he's an eternal spirit that shall not die but live. The body of Christ, his flesh died that day. He did not die because he is a spirit. And you cannot kill nor chain up the spirit of the living God. It cannot happen. So from now on, when you look back and you grieve or something, oh my God, this, that, and the other thing, think of the empty tomb because your sins were buried in there. See, there's a freedom in resurrection day that we don't study enough. Your sins were put in that tomb. An angel came down. I'm by the door and I'm praying back there during worship and they just kept walking up and down in front of the door. Don't tell me we're in here alone. First, the Holy Ghost is here. Gloria just proved that. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost took her today. What a beautiful thing to happen. Amen. Amen. But the angels are walking up and down in front of the doors. They're busy today. They're busy today. Because they're with us. They obey this word. See, they knew they were coming to roll that stone away before the earth was made. God made known the end from the beginning. He knew the third day He was going to rise. When, Like I said before, when God says, I'm going to do something, the conversation is over. We need to get that in our hearts and minds today, that when God says something's finished, it's finished. Amen? Amen. It says it a little different in Luke 24, and I put this in there for a reason last night when I changed everything around like God always does on Saturday night. In verses 5 to 7, it's 1 to 12. We're just going to read verses 5 to 7. It's real important that when you read the different Gospels, you see how the Spirit spoke differently and gave a different insight to what took place. It says, Then the women were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, and they said to them, this is the angel speaking to the women, Why do you seek the living among the dead? See, we, we look at God sometimes like He's really not here. No, God's omnipresent, okay? And the living among the dead, what did Job say? My Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. There's evidence of it today. <clears throat> he is not here, but is risen. Remember how He spoke to you when He was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. See what I mean about the promise of God? He came, He said how He was going to go, and He would rise on the third day. Promise of God. It's finished. Every promise in that book is the same as what he said. I'm going to rise on the third day. See, we don't take his promises serious enough. God said, I'm going to rise on the third day. God said all his promises are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. So why don't you believe? If, does everybody here believe he rose on the third day? Yes. Well, that's why we're here. Then why don't you believe all his promises for you? Amen. Because as surely as he said that, he's going to fulfill that. He told me, he said, if my church ever got a hold of the fact that I keep my promise, my biggest promise was I'm coming, I'm coming again, but the main was I'm going to rise on the third day. Every promise in the book is as sure as what he said, I'm going to rise on the third day. He can't break his word. He can't break his word. It's so important that you see today when you are in struggling against something and God says, turn to these scriptures, speak the promises over your circumstance. Too many Christians talk about their circumstances instead of speaking the word over them and watching them go away. Everything that Christ did is in the past tense. It's finished. It's done. Your spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, financial, healing, wholeness, and prosperity, it's finished already. You just need to start speaking it. Start speaking the third day. Amen. Start speaking the third day. And watch God manifest His promises to you because He cannot fail you. He will not fail. See, we talk failures. God doesn't know how to fail. He's perfect and just and true in all of His ways. And we really need to get a hold of this today. If you stop looking over your shoulder, you can see your future. That's right, amen. Mm -hmm. See what that does? Yes. 
I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. On the third day, the empty tomb. The word will come to pass if you speak it and believe it. Your words have no power unless you believe what you spoke. Oh. They have no power. They have no authority unless you believe them. Amen? Too many Christians are praying for things instead of praying to be like Jesus. That's right. Amen. Whoop. Got you on that one. But it's so important today. Watch in Hosea. This is almost where I was going to put Deborah's verse, but he shortened it down. Hosea 13, 14. When he rose on the third day, it says, Hosea said, I will rent. Look what Jesus had Hosea say. This is God speaking through him. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Death, I will be your plagues. O grave, I will be your destruction. See, he came to destroy the grave. He came to destroy it so that you'll never go there. See, that's why every Christian should be fearless Christians. Like I said, when we did Kay's service on Friday afternoon, the one thing she told my wife many years ago, don't cry for me when I'm gone. I'm going to be with my Jesus. Amen. She said, don't grieve, don't sorrow, because I won't be. I've been to heaven. You don't do any grieving and sorrowing up there. You just don't. It's love, peace, joy. Sing and worship and praise to King Jesus for all eternity. With your family. Amen? Amen? It is so important today that the bedrock of our foundation is the empty tomb. Because without that, there's no salvation. There's no heaven for anybody. You can't get there under the law. You can't get there through works of the flesh. There is no redemption without the Redeemer coming and paying the price you couldn't pay. So it's so important. The importance of this empty tomb today has been so strong in my heart this week. We really don't emphasize it enough. You know, we have Easter Sunday, and they forget about Easter Sunday till next 12 months from now. You forget all about the empty tomb a lot of times by Sunday night after we're done eating. And you go visit with family and other things. No, but the empty tomb is why you're here today. It's the only reason we're here today. And there's only, it's the only reason there's an empty door. It's wide open. There's nothing blocking you and the Father for you going in and spending two days there now. Don't wait to get to heaven to enjoy heaven. Enjoy heaven now because it's already in you. Amen. 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 That's the Amen. empty tomb. The power of the empty tomb of the resurrection is already alive and well in you because He is eternity. Amen? Amen. If you have the Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Actually, we're going to start at verses 12 to 14, 20 to 22, and then 54 to 57. When I say this, and I talk to a lot of people about the power of the empty tomb and him conquering sin and death, they kind of just look at me like, these are Christians I talk to. They want to know why I smile, why I have such joy. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure, I have a, a knowing in my heart and in my spirit that the tomb's empty, that the price has been paid, that my mansion in heaven is built. Uh, John 14, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in me, believe in God. In my Father's house are many mansions. And I've already gone to prepare a place for you. See, I have an assurance in this book that it's infallible. And God said, this is what I've done for you. So I don't question when I leave here. That's so why I tell people, I said, don't ever, if you have anything when I'm gone, if I don't go before any of you and I'm already gone and you're all still here, please throw a party. <laughs> please throw a party. That's right. I mean, don't shed a tear, don't you? Because I won't be. When you get to heaven, you don't shed any tears. <clears throat> there's no more sorrow. There's no more pain. There's no more darkness. Amen. It's eternal life forever and ever. But it has to be the bedrock of our foundation of the, what that empty tomb means to you and I today. In 1 Corinthians, just 12 and 14, we're going to start off there. This is Paul speaking. Now, Christ has preached that He has been raised from the dead. How do some among you say that there is no resurrection from the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is empty. You know why I know that I know that I know the tomb is empty? Because I know my preaching is of God and is of the Holy Spirit. And there's evidence of it here this morning, how it took glory over today. There's evidence because I feel it in my body when I get all hot. I know there's evidence because the oil flows out of my hands and my head. I don't need a bottle of oil anymore. I know there's evidence that he rose again because we're grafted into the olive tree of life. I don't doubt 
Well, my wife was watching something yesterday about some of these Christian artists are now joining um, that other community that's forcing their agenda on our children and everything. Well, however many letters they have now. They have a lot of letters now. They have all these different sexes now. You can be all these different things now. And Christian artists are really getting up in ministries. One of, one of the singers she likes. I said, no, this is okay now. So, do they believe in the empty tomb? Did they ever give their hearts to Jesus? Because you can't preach that and open up that book and be one with God. You cannot. I judge none of those people because I want them saved and healed. God wants to deliver them. Remember Jesus, every time he met a sinner and healed them, he said, go and sin no more. He didn't throw any stones. He didn't even rebuke them. He healed them and then said, go and sin no more. The women caught in adultery. Does no one condemn you, my daughter? No, neither do I. Go and sin no more. I mean, he didn't jump up and down and scream, you terrible sinner. Same thing with them, but it's being forced on people like never before. And now you have Christian so-called artists, ministers, pastors, evangelists, joining Satan's kingdom to defile the cross. <clears throat> when I tell you God's going to judge his house first, you watch what he's about to do. Because when you, when you do that, you've called God a liar. Maybe you can, and maybe they can, but I won't. Amen. Amen. In this house, we will never call God a liar. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, I mean, I look forward to going home. I've seen heaven. But I don't want to get there because I call God a liar. <laughs> There's a penalty for representing Christ. Do you know that? I'm responsible for this. And every one of you sitting in this house, and I've told you all before, you are ordained ministers by God before the foundation of the earth to preach His Word. You're ordained ministers. Not by man, not by school, but by the blood of Jesus Christ when He bought you. Amen. He said, you will be my ministers. You will be my witnesses, saith the Lord. Amen. You will go into all the earth and share the good news of the gospel. Right. You will fulfill the Great Commission. Every one of you is ordained for it. There's no more running from God for any of you in this house or you watching online. Some of you have been running from God sitting right in this building right now. Some of you watching online have been running from God. You stop your running. You repent. You humble yourself and say, use me, O oh God. Because the day of making decisions is over. <clears throat> you are either in the kingdom, you're going to fulfill your destiny, or you're not. Because he will give it to another. And all these people defiling the cross... <coughs> His cross, that He paid everything for you, you will not get away with it. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's no way you can. In verses 20 to 22, But now if Christ is risen from the dead <clears throat> and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man came the resurrection from the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. See, that first fruits that represents Christ Jesus, He's the first one to die and rise again and live eternally. There's another confidence we have because of the empty tomb. When you got born again, your Adam nature died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your Adam nature, your Adam and Eve nature died. I can't leave her out. They were partners in crime. <laughs> well, they were. Yes, they were. I used to tell my wife that the Bible says Paul said that Eve sinned first. Well, actually, she didn't. Satan did. When he rose up in pride against the Holy God and heaven wanted to be higher than him. That was actually the first sin was pride and arrogance by Satan. The next two, he didn't correct the wife, so the wife said, no, this is good. He stood there and watched it and didn't say a word. Let me tell you something. God told Adam before he made Eve, don't touch that. Amen. Gentlemen, just sharing. So stop with that wife you gave me thing. But Dean's never done that. I've never done that, right, Dean? <laughs> no, because you know what? We still have a human nature, okay? And we need to smile because God does. But see the seriousness of that? Too many Christians bring their Adam and Eve nature into their salvation. Yeah, got quiet. 
nothing you were before, if you still have your Adam and Eve nature with you, and you enjoy it, and you talk about it, and you live in it, you never went to the tomb. That's right. Amen. That's right. You're not willing to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus. Do we all struggle? Yes. I'm not the only one that has struggles. Hebrews 5 says, you all have weaknesses, so you're all my family. Amen? Amen. But that's what His grace is for. I mean, it's it's hard because Dean came out perfect, so he doesn't struggle, but the rest of us, it's a work. Yeah. Praise God. No wonder why you married him, Kenny. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God wants us to rejoice today. A merry heart is good medicine, the Bible says. A merry heart is good medicine, the Bible says. Amen. Oh, man, it's good to be with the family of God. Verses 54 to 56. This is the power of the empty tomb when he rose on the third day. So when this is our body, so when this corruptible, that's your earthly vessel, has put on incorruption, that's your heavenly body, <clears throat> in this, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said at the service for Kay on Friday, you're never going to taste death. Everybody in here born again? Amen. Yes, We're all good. You're never going to taste it. Amen. You'll never be in an urn if you get cremated. <clears throat> You'll never be in a coffin. You'll never be put in the ground. Everybody says you can't be cremated because your body's going to rise when he comes back. Merry Christmas. That's one of the worst teachings there is in the Bible. They take it totally out of context. In the twinkling of an eye, your body is not here anymore. It's already dissolved as far as God's because the body you get in heaven is not the one that they put in a box or in an urn. It's the one you get when you get home. I've seen our heavenly glorified body you're raised in corruption, you're raised in incorruption, and in a glorified brand new body. So don't worry about whether they cremate you or put you in a box. Because you're not going to be here to see it. Amen. He tasted death for you. He destroyed the grave for you. And even in Isaiah in the bolt and whatever, but he swallowed it up. He came not just to save you, but destroy death and its sting. And the fear of it. <coughs> No Christian should ever, well, I'm worried about when I'm going to die. Why? Exactly. When you leave here is when your life begins. This is just preparation. And you know why we're not going anywhere? Because we're going to anoint somebody with a baby today in their womb. What a blessing. See, we got work to do. God the dogs going to keep creating babies unless he's got a plan. That's right. Amen. Amen. So we're not going there. Anybody wants Jesus to think that all these guys don't, oh, he's coming back so soon. No, he's not. No, he's not. We're going to anoint another baby today. This isn't even on the planet yet. It's still being carried. It's still being nurtured. Amen. And by the way, your baby's going to get filled with the Holy Ghost today. Amen. Just like John the Baptist to be an evangelist. Oh, thank you. I don't know if that's even Thank you, Jesus. Wow. You're carrying God's anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Told you you had calling. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So important today that your heart rejoices in what He conquered for you. Sin and death and the penalty thereof. Because you can't pay for it. You can't pray your way into it. You've got no money to offer God. Yeah, we give money every Sunday into the kingdom of God here. Yeah, that's fine. That's to further the kingdom. That's to do kingdom work. That's what it's for. Money isn't so we run around telling people how rich we are. No, I'm the richest man on the planet. I'm born again. I'm redeemed from the curse of the Lord. I got a mansion waiting for me in heaven. I am forgiven. I am sanctified. Yes. I have made the righteousness of God in Christ. I will never taste death nor the sting of it. Amen. Amen. And neither will any of you. So don't put your eyes on the things of the world because that's not what you're going to take to heaven. Amen. <clears throat> you're going to take the crowns you get by, you, by God using you and living through you by His Holy Spirit. In 1 Peter 3.18 it says, For Christ also suffered once, once, once for sins. For, for the just, He was the just for the unjust. That was us. That He might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh. That's under the law. But made alive by the Spirit. When He said that, put to death in the flesh, remember something. He walked under the law and fulfilled it perfectly. 
He did all the ceremonial, moral laws, all that stuff. He did all the festivals. He did all the new moon stuff. Everything that they had to do, he did perfectly under the law so you no longer live under judgment or condemnation in Christ. So important that you see what that empty tomb means. Because he took the power of the law, which was bondage, which was works of the flesh. He took that into the grave. And when he rose up, you now live under grace and truth. There's no condemnation for any of those that are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8.1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ that don't walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. See, when he died, he destroyed any kind of condemnation, any kind of earning from God. We receive everything from God by faith in the finished work of Christ when he came and died for us. It is so important to see how powerful that empty tomb is now. The law went in there. It's not that the law is still not in effect, because the law is what brings men to know they're sinners. But it was a tutor to lead us to Christ, the Bible says in Colossians. So it's so important today that we see the power of this empty tomb. And you notice he suffered how many times for your sins? Once. Once. Understand this. Your past, present, and future sins were taken into that tomb with Jesus. The thing is, is when we do something wrong, we bow our head. And as soon as you bow your head, he knows you're sincere. It's already in the tomb. Don't let it follow you around because you don't have a yesterday. That's right. You only have a future and a hope, and all your tomorrows will never. He was showing me this. If people don't see that everything you've ever done or going to do was, was taken into the tomb, he's not coming back again other than to bring his church home and to bring the wrath of God on all ungodliness and unrighteousness. That's what he's coming back for. He came as a lamb, but he's coming as a lion, and he's got a sword in his mouth, and when he breathes, it's going to be fire on all the earth. Amen? Amen. Praise God we're going home. Hallelujah. Praise God we're going home. Hallelujah. <laughs> Always remember the empty tomb is your past. So the next time you stumble, do something wrong, Lord, I thank you, you took that to the tomb. My past is empty. Yes. I don't have one. Amen. Always remember the power of that empty tomb today. Amen. Can Bibles turn to Romans, the sixth chapter? Verses 1 through 7. This is about really being free today. Really being set free from what you used to be to what you are now. So important because if you don't see yourself as what you are now, you're still living in the past and you still don't see how powerful the empty tomb was and that you were there with him. <clears throat> what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we, what? We, who died? That means in the past tense, to sin live any longer in it. Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Galatians 2.20, you've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself up for me. It's so important that we see today that you were buried spiritually. When you were born, you had a carnal nature and a carnal spirit. You had the spirit of Adam and Eve when you got born, in your mother's womb when you came out. Amen. 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 Now, today we reverse that because we're going to have a baby filled with the Holy Ghost just like John the Baptist was. He's had me do this before. That's why I've been praying for her to get here. Too many people wait for the baby to come out. No, no, no. The baby gets anointed today. Amen. Because the baby was anointed in heaven before it was put in her womb. Amen. Yeah. No, when I talked about the river of life doing that service on Friday, there's trees with the leaves for the healing of the nations. Those are the ones that aren't here yet. Those are the ones I didn't see faces on in heaven. The leaves are the healing of the nations, the word of God, which God gives to those that are going to come down and preach the word. They're going to come down and preach the Word. Amen. That baby's already eaten the Word when heaven was going to deliver the Spirit of life and put in your womb. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Amen. 
2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Hmm. If you don't see everything you were put in that tomb, you'll never see yourself as a new creation. That's right. Too many people talk about what they used to be. The only time I bring up my past is when I'm trying to help set somebody free. I took sin to a whole nother level. God never judged me. He forgave me. He saved me. He healed me. He baptized me in the Holy Ghost all in a two hour period and set me free. Two hours. He didn't come to me that Sunday morning and say, how could you? How could you have thought such things? He already knew what I was doing. But in His mercy, through His Son Jesus Christ, He saw me as a minister of God, a witness of Christ, telling people about Jesus, laying hands on the sick, prophesying the Word of God, anointing people, raising the dead, opening blind eyes. He already saw what He was going to do through me, not what I was going to do. He already saw where I'd come to the end of myself and say, I need help. I need salvation. I need healing. I need purpose in my life. He didn't judge me one minute that first Sunday morning. He embraced me. He loved me. He set me free. He anointed me and said, okay, you're mine now. You come walk with me. So when people tell me, no, there's no hope, there's no this, they don't know the Jesus I know. Right. Because I know one thing. I was raised from the dead long before I gave my heart to Him. So He had a plan. Do I understand the tragedies? We just prayed for that family that happened? No, I don't. That was not God's plan. That was the devil working overtime. Never accuse God of something going wrong. It's always darkness That's trying right. to destroy the light. But I just pray God get a testimony out of that whole circumstance because we don't understand everything, church. Don't even try and explain some things to people because there aren't all the answers aren't in here. I know one thing. His ways and His thoughts are higher than the heavens are above the earth. So I trust in His sovereignty over this world and over the universe. God, I don't understand this, what just happened. A woman gave up her life to save two babies that were drowning in a pool and she gave up her life for them. Just like Jesus gave up His life for us. She laid her life down for those babies. Now we pray that those babies recover because they're in the hospital. Amen? Amen? So don't try and explain God. Testify of Him. Because there is no explanation for the great I Am. He's so far above human words and human explanation, we can never really get that across to people. What I do is I testify of how much He loves humanity, how much He cares about us, how much He's for us and never against us. He's never been against man. He's been against sin and darkness and the works of the devil. And He came and defeated them if we walk in the light. What I'm sharing with you today, it's so important that you see that empty tomb is your past. And if you're talking about your past all the time, you never visited that tomb and you don't know the power of it. You don't see yourself spiritually being nailed here with Him it says you were crucified with Him. Spiritually, you were put on the cross. Okay? Spiritually, you were taken in to take Adam and Eve's nature into that grave. So when you came out, you were now a spiritual powerhouse for the living God. And it's so important that we see that there's no yesterdays, there's only tomorrows. Today we celebrate Christ in the empty tomb. But tomorrow you need to celebrate Christ in the empty tomb. It's a reminder of us that we don't have a past, we have a hope in the future. Do not live where you used to be. If you were living in where you used to be, you're never going to have a future. God can't manifest the future He has for you. You'll never walk in your anointing if you're living in the past. Your past got buried 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. This is where it really changed yesterday like God always does. If you got your Bibles, turn to 2 Timothy, the second chapter. We sang a song about that today. In the name of Jesus, every chain will be broken. He's the chain breaker. He's the chain breaker. Yes, he is. Because he's the word, and nothing can contain the word. This universe is held together by the word, it says. By the word of his power, the whole universe is held together. Amen? Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 1 to 13. We're just going to read 8 to 13. <clears throat> and look what he says to Timothy by the Spirit of God. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the Word of God 
is not chained. That's what's in you. You should never be in bondage to anything when you rely on the power that's in you. The same, you, we'll get to that in a minute. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. For if we die with Him, we shall also live with Him. If we endure, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He will also deny us. If we are faithless, watch this, He remains faithful because He cannot, cannot deny Himself. See the assurance we have in God's Word? He rose on the third day. He said He would. He can't deny Himself. It's amazing how we don't equate God as the living Word. It's alive, it's living, it's active, the Bible says. Sharper and powerful than any two-edged sword. It's more powerful than everything. His Word will be magnified above His name. Everything bows to the Word. But the Word is in you. See, if we'd stop looking to people to get us to live and start looking to the Word that's in us to break every chain, you'd be free people. The power to break your chains is in here already. It's called the Holy Ghost. The same power I'm going to read in a minute that raised Jesus from the dead. So it's so important today that we really see what God's doing here with an empty tomb. It is so important that you see today. I'm telling you, church, we have to start living as free people. Too many people live in what was. They talk about what was all the time. Why don't you talk about what God did for you? When you start talking about what He did for you in the Word, your thinking is going to line up with His thinking. I checked this morning. you got the mind of Christ. Every one of you has the Holy Ghost. And if you don't, you need to get it right now. Because that's part of your salvation. It says, all who call upon my name. He'll baptize you with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So it's so important today that we get past what was and start living in what's to be. See, I look forward to what lies ahead. I look forward to what lies ahead of the upper call, the prize of God found in Christ Jesus. That's what he said. Paul says, I don't ponder things in the past. That's also in Isaiah 43, 18, 19. If you're living in the past, you're not going to have a future with Jesus. You'll go to heaven, but you'll never be productive. You'll never bear fruit if you're living in what, what should have been left in the grave. You've got to see yourself today spiritually as being totally transformed from an old to a brand new nature. Once you get a hold of the fact that, man, my Adam and Eve nature was put in the tomb, and then you renounce that thing, God will keep it crucified if you let him. But too many people talk about the good old days. Anybody tells me they're a Christian and they remember the good old days when they're out being a child of the devil? Did you ever get a new heart and a new spirit? Yeah. Oh yeah, I have Christians tell me, oh man, remember when we were, oh man, these were great when we were doing this, that, and the other thing. I'm going, you were on your way to hell. Was there something good about that? Yeah. Did I miss see what John said it during worship? There is a heaven, but there's a hell, and they're both real, and I've been to both. So if you get around other Christians that are talking about the good old days, you need to rebuke them. Do it nicely, do it with grace, but just say, Are you saved? Because if you enjoyed that living as Satan, then you know what? I got a question whether you ever gave your heart to Jesus. I hated every second of my life. I knew I was evil, but I didn't know there was a way out. But Jesus came and got me. You know, I never looked for him. He had people praying for me. They wore me down until I gave my heart to Jesus. They prayed for me. They knew how evil I was. And yet they prayed for me and prayed for me until about 11 months later, I think it took them a bitter session to get me into that little building to get me delivered almost 32 years ago. They prayed until I came in and said, I surrender. Ooh, the empty tomb. The empty tomb. The empty tomb, church. See, if I was to look back and even judge myself for what I did, first of all, I'm not a judge. Amen. I'm not qualified to judge myself. I can examine myself, the Bible says. Don't you dare to judge yourself. You're not qualified. There's only one that can judge you, and the only thing he did was die for you and love you. Amen? Amen. Romans 8, 11, one little verse to finish with today. <laughs> Could have made it longer so the food would have smelled better or something. I'll drag it out. And it out. <laughs> Romans 8, 11. This is because of the empty tomb. But if the Spirit of Him, that's Jesus, who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, <clears throat> He who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the Spirit who dwells in you. Give life to what? 
when I tell people I'm going to be fresh and flourishing all the days of my life, you know why? The Spirit who dwells in me is going to keep me fresh and flourishing. Amen. See, He will. He will. The woman at the funeral home on Friday, she used to, we were talking to somebody, I told her how old I am, and she looked at me and went, I said, I'm healthier now than when I was 20. I'm healthier now than when I was 20. You know why? Because the Spirit that lives in me is life. John 6, 63, the words, God's word that is spoken to me is spirit and it is life. He promises to satisfy us with a long life and let us behold his salvation. He promises to restore all the years the swarming, crawling, chewing, consuming locusts that have eaten from me, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. He promises to restore everything. So no matter what I did to myself as a heathen, God has been restoring it now for almost 32 years. When they told me there was no hope for me, they didn't know Jesus. I didn't think there was hope for me. And then I met Jesus. I heard a voice call my name. Amen. He called my name. You know what I did was say, okay. Amen. Got up that morning, called my buddy. I said, where do you live? Went over to his house. He drove me to Santa Monica. And like they say, the story is still unfolding. <laughs> and all I said was, okay, Lord. That's all I said. You call him in the morning. You come to church tomorrow. You're mine now. I didn't even say yes to All I said was, okay. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. So I laid there until about 5.30, called my buddy, went to his house, went to a little church in Santa Monica. I'm like, Gloria, today I was out in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I thought God had killed me. I didn't know the fire was for my healing and deliverance and everything else. I said, oh, I'm going to hell today. I knew I shouldn't have come here. Um, no, that's what I thought it was. I didn't know this fear came on me. I'm sweating. I'm shaking. I'm about 200 degrees. I'm like this the whole two hours during the whole service like this. And I'm like... I looked at him, I said, I see you. No, I won't. You're going to heaven. I'm not. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was God's love for me. It was his fire come to heal me and set me free. So, church, today as we celebrate the empty tomb, as we celebrate the empty tomb today, resurrection day, I want you to remember it tomorrow morning. I want you to remember it Tuesday morning. I want you to remember it Wednesday morning. I want you to remember it every day of the week for the rest of your life, that empty tomb. Because without it, we're not here. Without it, we're not going to heaven. Amen? i got to fix this thing. What is this? Um, it's so important today that you see, that you see the importance of what he did that day. And that it was prophesied what would happen. But the promise is he keeps his promises. Amen? Amen. It's so important that you see today there's nothing God has said, even what we said to Liberty today. Guess what? I knew God was going to speak prophecy over her today and that baby today. You know why? Because babies are a gift from God. Like I said, that's why I don't think God's coming all that soon. I think He might come in all lifetimes. But there's too many babies I've anointed just in the last five years. They haven't fulfilled their destiny yet. God's got a plan. And the plan is to save every human being on the planet. And He's not coming until that last soul is saved. So today is a day of rejoicing. But don't let it stop today. I'm telling you, you wake up tomorrow morning, you thank Jesus for the empty tomb. Yes. Watch your days change when you do. Watch your life change when you are thankful. And remember something, we can never pay him back. You can't. You just can't. You can't pay back Jesus. He doesn't want you to pay him back. He wants your heart so that he can use you and bless you. And use you mightily and do great things with you. This is a five-fold prophetic healing ministry. It's going to start manifesting signs, wonders, and miracles like never before. Because this is the day of, uh, of the last call from heaven for salvation. This is the latter rain days in Joel 2, where the salvations are going to be billions of souls around the world. God is on the move everywhere. Be a part of it by submitting your whole heart to Him today in Jesus' name. And fathers, we come today giving you thanks for sending your Son, your Holy Son, the sinless lamb that was slain for our salvation. For our eternal destiny is secure in Christ. So Lord, as we praise you today and bless your holy name, we bless the rest of this day. I thank you for the anointing on the food, on this time of fellowship. For God, we only come together in one name, the name of Jesus. And you said with two or more are gathered in your name, you're there in our midst. And we thank you that you're manifesting in here your glory, your power, your love, your grace, your peace the healing stripes of Christ upon our bodies with which we were healed over 2,000 years ago. 
So whatever kind of healing anybody needs today, I thank you it's already transpired. It's in the past. We are already healed and whole and complete, spirit, soul, heart, mind, and body in Christ. And we just thank you for the rest of this day because we're coming together as a family of one, knit together through your love, my Lord. So we praise you, we bless you, we bring you glory, praise, and honor, King Jesus. I just thank you for the manifestation of your glory in here right now. In Jesus' amen. mighty name, amen and amen. amen.